three, two, one. Now broadcasting live. Boom. Hello, Way Up North community. Uh, my name is Chris Danner. Uh, some of you may know me from recent uh, podcasts that I did with the wonderful uh, Cole Roberts. Um, many of you will probably know me from the community. Uh, many of you may not know me, which is equally cool because by the end of this, we're going to be like friends and we can next time we meet up at Way Up North or other events, we can hug and you can buy me drinks and I can just, we can just hang and have super fun. So welcome to my webinar, um, which is entitled Actions Not Words, um, which is a silly, silly title, but it essentially it's what I'm going to be talking about is loads and loads and loads of things that you can do. I'm going to be saying words, you're going to be doing actions. So it made sense to call it actions, not words. So essentially, this is going to be an actionable COVID-19 survival guide. Um, I'm going to talk about a bunch of stuff for the next hour. Um, it's going to be things you, you definitely do know. It's going to be things you may not know and things you think, oh, my God, that's so stupid and I'm not doing that. That's all good. That's so cool, man. That is all good. Oh, yeah, Jonas. Hey. <laughs> I've got it starting. Um, so the one thing I want to get out of the way immediately, this is just my opinions. This is the way I run my business. Um, this is my thought process. I will go through it, stream of conscious thought. It'll be very, very tangent. Um, so do take notes. If you can't follow the notes, don't worry about it. I will be posting a PDF um, and sharing it with Cole with all the bullet points so you can just go back and look at them. Oh. Uh, Birgit, yes, she's there. Um, so essentially, the main thing to remember is, again, this is my opinion. This is not gospel. These are just ideas. Um, and ideas can be good and bad. They can usually be both. What is really good for me is maybe not so good for you. You know your brand. You know your business. Um, so take all of it with a pinch of salt. Um, and please, please do take it in the spirit which is intended. I'm not trying to be rude or insult people. I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs. A lot of this is really simple, basic stuff. Um, but there will be people out there at different skill levels, different places with their businesses. So also try and understand that when you implement some of these actions, there'll be different factors that will affect your success. Um, try to be realistic and you know, try and give yourself a break if things do get tricky. It's not meant to be easy. Um, being a photographer is super duper flipping hard. Um, we have to do so many things and wear so many hats. So that's essentially what we're going to be doing. So today, most of the conversation is going to be about business, like your business, um, how you run your business, how you operate your business, how you can expand and diversify your business. Again, it will be a bunch of things that you probably already know and things you may not be doing or maybe not doing as much as you probably should have or you might be doing it too much. Um, and then I'm going to wrap up towards the end with like maybe 10 minutes just chatting about like how to look after yourself in lockdown. Lockdown has been pretty savage. Um, I know from my own experiences, it, it's been crushing. Um, and if I allowed myself to indulge a lot of the feelings and negativity I've had, I just won't get out of bed in the morning. Um, you know, that, that, that's, that, that's, that's the truth. Um, the scary thing that I find, I found most about, um, uh, COVID lockdown, and this is like full disclosure, it's been terrifying. Even as a professional now, I've been a photographer for 22 years. The reality is that I have found shortfalls in my own life and my own work. Um, so I work alone and I, I live alone. Um, the reality I've found is I haven't got any of the safety nets. The only thing that my parents are going to leave me is a bill. Um, I don't have anybody else's wage to fall back on. Um, and obviously, as soon as COVID hit and our lives just changed and our shooting schedules changed, all of a sudden, I was like, I just wasn't shooting. I just wasn't working. I had clients ringing me or constantly trying to rearrange and postpone. And what, but the reality is the gas bill needs paying, the lecky needs paying, mortgage needs paying, the rent needs paying. you still got to pay yourself a rent, um, got to pay yourself a, a wage. And it was terrifying. And the first couple of weeks led me to start seriously drilling down into my business and working out what was right and what wasn't right. So essentially, a little bit about me. So I'm Chris Danner. I'm based in the UK. Um, I'm an absolute total rock star. Um, I'm a straight up gangster baller. Um, that's what I love. Um, as you can see, I have feathers in my hat. That's how gangster I am. Um, as with most of you, my style is very modern. My style is... Um, 
yeah, it's just candid. It's relaxed. It's 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 documentary. Uh, I love portraits. I love using off camera flash. If anybody looks at my Instagram or looks at my website, you'll see that hopefully my my work has a unique style to it. Um, and I'm known in the community. If you know me, that I I have a persona and I have a, 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 a you know I live my brand. That's who I am. I'm a rock star, and that's my photography. But like I said, I've had 22 years in the industry. I've learned an awful lot from working in studios and being self-employed for the last 13 years. So hence, I'm going to share some of this information with you right now. Okay, so first thing we have to consider, and do please take this in the spirit which is intended, is that you have a shelf life. Okay, your photography has a shelf life. You as a photographer have a shelf life. If you haven't already done so, think of an exit plan. Think of a realistic exit plan. You will not be shooting weddings when you're 60 years old. Well, I hope you're not, and I hope you don't want to be shooting weddings when you're 60. The reality is now I'm 42, and I want to be coming out of weddings realistically when in my, at the latest when I'm 50. Because at the minute, I am an alternative in the industry, and I'm current and cutting edge and trending and blah, 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 blah. But I don't want to be doing that when I'm 50. You know, I don't want to be chasing that. Um, I want to be established and I want to be able just to ease off the back pedal. I want to be working one or two weddings a month. Um, so we have to look at this opportunity now where we've got bags of time sitting at home as a way to broadly diversify our business and look at other ways to do two things, two things, right? Save money and then make money. And we want to do bang, both at the same time. That will be brilliant. Um, so we're going to dive straight into this. Okay, so business. Um, most of the start photographers I know have lost the majority of their livelihoods this year. They just have. That's the reality. So it's going to force us to reevaluate our next steps to secure survival. That's where we should be thinking. Survival, survival. If you're secure, brilliant, awesome. But there's a bunch of us that aren't. So survival has to come first. We have to keep ahead of water. Um, not only for their businesses, but like if you're the main earner in that household, um, you have a responsibility and the pressure on you is going to be feeling horrible. But hey, we're all in this together. Hence me doing this webinar for you. If I can give you at least one or two pieces of advice where you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. Hallelujah moment. Wicked. More power to you. So they, there's a lot of pressure on us at the minute. Um, some people have taken up some people, photographers I know in the community have actually taken up different forms of employment during this downturn just to keep the lights on, just to keep money coming in. And I'll tell you right now, there is no shame in that at all. I would quite happily, uh, like tomorrow, I'm not really doing much. If someone said to me, Chris, I'll give you £100 to go and pick potatoes in a field, you, you best guess I'd be outside I'd get in a tan. The reality is money speaks. You know, you don't want to be as broke as a joke because pride ain't going to pay your bills. So if you get the opportunity of other work, just take it, just do it. But we'll touch on that again in a little bit. Um, okay, so the first thing is really boring. It's about money. We're going to talk about money, 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 money. It's dead boring. Um, but before you can make a good plan, um, we've got to know where we stand, okay? Um, the number one issue most creatives face, um, and I say that as a musician and as a photographer, because obviously I'm a rock star, as you all know, um, you need to know your numbers and you need to understand how healthy your business is. Um, so this is true in photography, but I'm also a musician. Um, and as someone that records and writes songs and releases albums, you need to know where your place is in an industry, what your target audience is, and what you need to make to make your business and your release profitable. There's no point spending a load of money on an album and releasing it, and you're not going to make any money because no one's buying it. So first one, this is really boring. Understand your business, grab control of your business and do it now. Don't be scared, don't be scared. Get to grips with your profit and loss statement. If you don't know what that is, try and understand your personal and business costs. Don't be scared, you've got to try and find the time to go through your statements. Um, so what you wanna be doing is really find out what your fixed, fixed and then variable costs are, okay? Now you probably all know this, but your fixed costs are the stuff that's fixed every month. Rent, gas, lecky, Adobe subscription, uh, shoe proof subscription, other services are available. Um, those are your fixed things that you know month after month after month you've got to pay. They have to be paid for you to continue working. So do that. Go through your bank statements. These should be pretty easy to identify. Um, 
So that should then give us a baseline of what every every month you have to pay. And then variable costs are things that go up and down. They can be something simple like um, gas for your car. I mean, none of us are really driving very far. Um, food. Um, I spend a lot on food. I spend a lot on booze. Speaking of which, one second. Um, so you work out what these are, put them together, and you've got a fairly good uh, base base part to um, work out what your monthly costs are going to be. Hey, Greg, good to join us. Um, okay. So again, personal costs are mortgages, rent, insurance, government tax, any credit card payments like cars, loans, cameras, blah, 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 memberships to gyms, clubs. These are easy to identify as they're usually a fixed amount and are usually identified under a, as a standing order or direct debit. I don't know what it works like in your countries, but that's where it is. Okay. Business. So do your personal first. Work out what you need, what you absolutely need month after month to survive as an individual at this point. That's really important. Then we're gonna look at the business. What does the business have to do? Now, this is a bit more trickier because you'll have a lot of transactions in and out, um, but factor in wages, your wages, if you draw a wage from the business, rent, subscriptions, like I've already touched on, Shootproof, Adobe, blah, 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 Pixaloo, tax, obviously. All of these things should be, shouldn't be rocket science, but it's really, really important. If you haven't done it, it's all very well saying, oh, I kind of know. No, just get a pen and paper, just write them down and know. Work out what you're doing. So you're drawing up two plans and that should give you an idea of what your monthly needs are for your personal business needs so you can grow. Um, this should give you an idea of how healthy your business is um, and give us ideas for growth. Let's, let's, let's try and do something really positive with this. And I found that when I did it, because I'm pretty good with money, um, despite being a baller, um, I ain't no broke baller. So I went through it all and I was like, oh my God, I'm actually spending money on this and I don't use it. Oh my God, I spend money on this and I don't even like it or use it anymore. So, so you just, you can actually start saving money. Um, so that's where you're going to be saving money. That's a really important part because if you can save, say $50 a month on subscriptions, on um, direct debits with advertising, with magazines or things like that that you do, but you don't really get a return on, just bin them off. If you can save 50 bucks a month, that's $600 a year you've saved. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So that's saving money. Now we're going to talk about immediately how you can make money. Um, okay, so things you can put into motion today. Hey, <laughs> hey, Aaron. Oh, one of my students that I mentor has popped in, bless her. <laughs> hey, Aaron. Um, okay, so um, I, I don't have the time to shout out everybody that pops in onto the chat, by the way, guys. But if you've got questions, do fire off to me. Um, and I'll try my best to answer them. But, you know, I'm kind of streamer conscious thought. I'm just trying to race through this because I've got loads to talk about for you. Okay, so uh, where were we? Things you can put into motion. Um, right, the first thing you should be doing as wedding photographers, if you don't already do it, wedding album design. This is really, really important. You can make a ton of money, loads and loads and loads of money on it. I do it. I do it with practically 90% of my clients. I heavily encourage my clients to take wedding albums from me because they're so flipping profitable. If you've shot a bunch of clients over the last three or four years and they didn't take albums from you, the thing you should be doing right now is messaging these clients and saying, hey, guys. I'm offering albums now. Would you like one? Um, blah, 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 blah. Can we do this? Now's a great time, um, particularly clients from last year. It's a really important time now to engage with these people. You've already shot their work, you've already shot their weddings, you've already done the work, you've already edited it, it's already there. I personally use Pixaloo. All the systems are available, but they are so easy for designing albums. For me, it takes probably 20 minutes to design an album, and then boom, I'm done. And I can send it to the client. It's all cloud-based. It's really easy. Again, it's a subscription you'll pay for monthly, which is what I do. What do I do? I say pay. Oh, I think I do it monthly. I want my pay it one off. But it's really worth doing. And don't be scared. Don't be scared to sell. Like I've always sold my work. Um, my early parts of my career was in portrait studio. So we were selling constantly. Everybody came through the door for portraits. We had to sell to them. Um, so don't be scared to sell. Just send out, just write a really nice email and send it out to all your clients. And the reality is the majority of them are going to be like, yes, that's something I want. Um, let them know you're doing album designs and you'd love to create a special sort of heirloom for them. Um, um, 
calculate the costs of the albums. Um, Pixel are particularly good. They allow you to add in supply, um, like printers. I use a printer called GF Smith in the UK. Again, all the printers are available. Um, but you know, reach out to those printers. Say how much is a sixteen by four, uh, sixteen by twelve, twenty-four spread pay uh, book. Blah 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 blah. Right, that's going to be two hundred quid. Right, so you want to be selling that for four hundred. Four hundred to your client. So you want to know I'm going to be making two hundred pound profit on that product, and it will probably take you half an hour to design it. If you can do, let's say you do five of them a month, it's a thousand thousand pounds. And you've got happier clients who are then going to go around their friend's house and go, look at my wedding album, and you're going to get booked because your work is so amazing. Um, yeah, so that's a really important thing to do. Um, right, printed images. I mean, we all love to sell prints. This is just an extra thing. I've started really hammering it home with my clients where you've already done the work, you've already shot the wedding, you reach out to these clients. Um, I've offered a discount of third, basically what I did. I pushed all the prices up on the on the shoot proof thing by 25% and I offered a 25% discount. So I'm still making the same amount of money that they think they're getting a saving. Um, it's just common sense and it's just selling. That's all it is. It's all about making some money. Um, that's what we're here to do. We're talking about really simple ways you can make money. Yeah, so reach out to those kind of clients. Um, remind them that their wedding and engagement photos, you know, everyone's decorating at the minute. I know I've done it in my home. I've redecorated my home, most of my home. Um, and just reach out to your clients and be like, hey, remember that wedding we did last year where you looked amazing? You know, it looked awesome on your wall, 16 by 12. Yeah, and I can do that for you for 30 bucks. You know, you might get $15 profit off that. It's 15 bucks for doing practically nothing. You know, you really need to be thinking about this. So I, like I said, I use I use uh, ShootProof for this. ShootProof are very easy to use. All of our systems are available. I just prefer ShootProof. So the other thing you can do immediately, which is something I have done, which is vital to the survival of my business, is when I've postponed my clients from this year. So I've had to postpone all my clients from March until the end of August now, okay? So when I'm postponing clients, when I'm moving them into next year, I'm asking them, cool, I will move you with no penalty. There'll be no penalty for moving, but I'm gonna have to take what you owed me this year to secure that date. Now, that's not cheeky. There's loads of photographers I know that don't want to do it. That's cool. I'm not that photographer. I want that money. I want that money in my bank. As far as I'm concerned, they were going to pay me this year anyway, so they're going to pay me this year. It just keeps the money rolling in, money rolling in. It does obviously open up a deficit for next year because obviously I'm moving clients from this year to next. I don't have as many payable spots, but we're going to cover that off later as well because I found a little trick of how we're going to manage that as well. So most clients are going to accommodate the movement. They're just going to do it. They're not going to be difficult with you. So just try your best to, 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 to be brave and just make it obvious that's what you need to do. So in regards to, so you're saying, but Chris, you know, you're not shooting any weddings this year, but you're taking the money and you're shooting a shit ton of photos. That's a technical term, shit ton, shit ton. You're doing a load of wedding shoots next year, but you're not going to, you're going to get paid for half of them. How are you going to get money in next year? Well, good question I hear you ask someone. That's a really good question someone's just asked, actually. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so what I do is when clients pay me now, when they book, they pay a deposit. And then, so say someone books me for June 2022. Yeah, two years away. Awesome. Take a deposit this year. So say they book me and it's 2,000 bucks. Cool. Nice round figure for us to work with. I would take a $500 deposit this year. Then I would look through my financial forecast up until June 2022, and I would probably take another $500 from them in January next year, 2021. I would take a further $500 from them in October 2021, and then I would take their remaining balance of $500, and that would be May 2022. Um, basically, what you want to get to – oh, another good question. It's good. People are people are popping in. I will get to the questions, guys. Just bear with me. There's there's quite a few of you messaging, but it's all good. It's all positive. Um, so yeah, you want to get to a point where your cash flow is constantly moving in. Um, you don't want to get to a point where you're like, oh my god, next year I'm shooting like 50 weddings. And I'm only getting paid for 22 of them. That's the reality. You will get that. But you want to do right. I'm shooting 50. I'm getting paid for 22. Ah. But actually, there's a bunch of people in 2022 who are actually paying money to me as well. 
you're going to have to take a hit financially. We all are going to take a hit. Some of us more than others. And my hit's going to be really, really, you know, I've worked out what mine is and it's, it's quite significant. Um, but I'm mitigating that over as big a period as possible. So for me, I'm going to, my estimated losses, I'll share with you because I don't care. It's going to be at 31,000 pounds. 31,000 pounds is what my business is going to lose because of, um, because of COVID-19. But 31,000 pounds over an 18 month period is manageable. I can get through that and I can survive because I know I'm going to be popping up with loads of print sales, extra sales, um, and more things we're going to talk about now. So tiered payments are super important. Bigger deposits are really important. Um, here's a little thing for your contract. Here's a little hack. When you, in the wording of your contract, the deposit, don't put deposit $500. What I do is I put a booking, booking fee, $350, and then a deposit of 150 bucks. The reason for that is that I say that it's a 350, I basically say to the clients, it's going to be an awful lot of money for me to book you in, do a Skype meeting, get your contract looked at by a solicitor, get it out to you. It's all time and energy. So if they come back to you somewhere down the line and they're being awkward and they want their money back and they go, ah, you know what, we'll cancel your services, we want our deposit back. Yeah, okay, you can have your 150 bucks back. You're not having the rest of it because I can prove to you that I've worked for it. So that is something you should be doing as well if you're not already doing it. So look at how you use the terms booking, um, booking fee and deposit. So, okay, next year, this is this should be obvious. We're all doing it. Smaller weddings, elopements are where it's going to be. Um, I know it's really fashionable. I know it's really like buzzworthy at the minute that like we all want to be we all want to be elopement photographers. We all want to be adventure photographers because it's really cool and it's really interesting. It's really fun. Um, the potential is so you want to, if that's what you want to do, because that's what I've done over the last couple of years is. Sorry, I was just taking a big drink. Um, so what you want to be doing is tailoring your portfolio to this, um, making it specific. People will be doing elopements. I personally shoot a lot of elopements. Um, for most, and mostly the reason for that is that people either have family issues or they just want a private, intimate ceremony. They just want to get away the two of them. They just want to accept, they just want adventures, the two of them. That's awesome. So I, I tailor my approach to that. Uh, so I actually have a landing page on my website just for elopements. I wrote a really nice bunch of copy, which has a lot of keywords, excuse me, in it, which then people are Googling, elopement photographer, you know, I'm coming up and they're finding my work. So if you want to branch into that, it's not enough just to have one or two photos in your portfolio. Have a dedicated landing page, loads of nice photos, have a load of Q&A on it as well because Google loves that. But we'll touch on all of this again in a little bit because we've got a whole section on Google, a whole section on SEO, a whole section on social media, and that's pretty boring. But you have to do it. You know, you're going to have to do all of these things, guys. Um, it will help. It will definitely help. So... You've got to make sure that you are ahead of the game in regards to especially elopements because it's very, very popular. And there is some amazing photographers out there. But I think that there will be a huge need. I think there will be a huge need, huge growth industry. Uh, let people know you're offering elopement photography for couples who are looking for an intimate wedding or a micro wedding. Um, it, it, it's a good idea to make this stand out away from your normal wedding photography. So like I said, I've actually done a section as a landing page on my web page. I've done it as a and a I've done it so there's loads of information on there for the brides and grooms uh, or the couple, sorry. Um, so make it so if clients are searching specifically for elopements as opposed to weddings, like think about that. If they're Googling elopement photographer, elopement photographer Sweden, elopement photographer UK, and all your SEO and your keywords are wedding photographer, wedding photographer, wedding photographer, you're not going to be found. So just think about um, the density and your use of keywords, which is really interesting. That I've recently been on a course for it. I'm on a course for SEO and it's dead boring. But once you start getting your head around it, it's like the light bulb moment. Hallelujah. Um, so, yeah, definitely think about that. Um, you might even want to think about a separate website or Instagram account for your, um, for your different brands, for your different elopements. If you're So the next thing we're going to work on, we're going to talk about is portraits. We're all doing them. I'm doing them. I'm doing loads of portraits. I am literally killing it right now on portraits. Um, I'm out doing probably 10 to 12 portrait sessions a week. Well, I was because, as you probably may know, there's been an outbreak in, in, in England, particularly the city I live in. So I'm back under lockdown. I am living the lockdown dream. Uh, so I can't 
for the next two weeks, but I have been killing it. So I've been doing portraits. Um, so as social distancing eases, um, look to do your engagement sessions, pre-wedding shoots for your clients and sell portrait sessions. These are, again, you're gonna bring money in. You're gonna bring money, money, money in. Um, as restrictions ease, um, many people are looking to support small businesses. So, you know, put a really good Facebook post out there, put a really good Instagram post out there, ask your friends and family to share it, tag, you, tag people in who might be interested in it and be realistic with your costs. You know, if you're looking for $500 for a portrait session, probably people aren't gonna pay that. But if, you've, if you're asking for 150 bucks, yeah, people might do that. And you might get three bookings and all of a sudden you've made, boom, $450. But if you're asking for $500, you might not get any bookings. Um, you also, the good thing about doing portrait sessions, I mean, I did it just because I was worried about my skills degrading, if I'm honest, because I hadn't picked up a camera for a couple of weeks, apart from shooting like my crazy self-portrait project, which you should also definitely check out because it's amazing. Um, so think about doing the portraits. Um, of course, take precautions and take it seriously, like really take it seriously. I do. When I do the sessions, I check in with the clients beforehand. I check the government uh, website for the back to work guidelines that I'm adhering to it. I always take gloves. I always take a mask. I always take hand sanitizer in a little bag and I contact all my clients and say, I'm happy to use any of these and show you that I've got them at any point in the session if you wish to see them. You know, put them at ease. You're the expert. You're the expert. So put them at ease. They want portraits people do want these things they want to come out of lockdown for good experiences and you're all another question i will get to that yeah you're right um so you will get you will you will get these sessions coming in um you want to be able to keep your clients safe and well and make sure they're not spreading illness obviously um the other thing to think about as well is is doing like sell for holidays so for me i've been selling portrait sessions um, but what I'm moving into next week is I'm going to be selling holiday, um, holiday specific vouchers. So for Christmas, where people can buy vouchers for their friends and family for Christmas with a two year expiry date and they can buy them for one hundred dollars. So I get one hundred dollars. Someone's friend gets a voucher. I get a phone call next year. Hey, Chris, can you fit me in for this hour portrait session? Yeah, of course I can. Um, every year I do this and I generally would generate maybe between two to three, the most I've made is about four and a half thousand dollars um, from doing this. So it's well, well worth doing. Um, yeah. Think about how to sell. Don't be scared to sell. Most people want to be sold to. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're not spamming them. You know, these people, you've already probably got really strong relationships with them. So you're not spamming them. Um, try now. This is interesting. Try with different niches. So at the minute there's, you know, reach out to local businesses, especially around my way, pubs aren't open, which is devastating because I like a good drink. Um, but um, everyone's doing takeaways. All the pubs and restaurants doing takeaways. Reach out to them and say, hey, guys, do you need food photography? Do you need me to come in when the pub is empty and take really beautiful uh, photos of your pub? Because you'll probably redecorate it while it's quiet. Like branch out into other areas. But it's also about connecting with other businesses of a business that can promote you um, and build a really good rapport with those businesses. Um, so that, you know, branch out into that. And again, you might get a free meal. You might get paid for it. You don't know. But reach out to wedding venues, reach out to other vendors. But we'll touch on that again. Um, so things you can do now for when you start shooting again. Here we go. This is, this is quite interesting. I don't do this myself, but I think it might work. I'm going to try it. Um, okay. So have a bunch of business cards printed uh, next time you go to a wedding. And what I use, like I said, I use shoot proof. So I preload the client's gallery, get the unique URL code, and then I print it on the card. And when I go to the wedding, I'm chatting to the bride's mom, bride's dad, bride's brother and sister with a niece, with a flower girl, I'm handing out these cards. And I'm saying, hey guys, you might want to check that, check that in about a month because the photos will be live. And then you're able then to sell prints onto those people. Now I've never really tried it, but I've, I'm have i gonna try it, see what happens because I get asked loads at weddings, um, you know, where can I get the prints? How do I get the prints? Oh, this is amazing. So something to try, see if it works. Um, online promotions. Um, I mean, there are websites like PickTime that offer you ways to upsell. Like I said, I use Shootproof, but there are ones like PickTime that allow you to upsell to clients and families with a special promo code. Like I said, do a discount, um, get the code out there, um, adjust your prices accordingly. People want services. I mean, don't be worried about marking up. I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the, 
the markup in the food industry is ridiculous. We're talking hundreds of percent here. You're not ripping anybody off for your skills, guys, at all. Um, now, this is really good. This is a really good one. You can definitely do this. Create a client guide, okay? I use Adobe Spark. All the programs are available. Um, and just write a client guide. Write it all out. So it's basically, um, you'll be asked the same questions constantly by brides and grooms and brides and brides and grooms and grooms and blah, 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 blah. So just write it as a Q&A, and then you can do it as a PDF, and you can send it out. Um, you can also then put it on as a blog post because Google's Schemata, Schematica or whatever it's called will probably pick up on that as well because Google loves a good Q&A. Um, and you then look like the expert. Um, write a, if you put it as a blog post, that could be really cool, but also submit it to other blogs. Submit it to magazine blogs. It, you know, you're the experts. You're the experts here. So you know, write, these, write this Q&A. The worst case scenario is when a client books, because I've got them, when a client books, they immediately get this Adobe Spark document from me saying, what happens now? And then um, two months before the wedding, they get a style and posing guide from me, which is like stuff just to think about in the run-up to the wedding and the run-up before they do their pre-shoot with me. And again, all of my clients are like, wow, that's really helpful because we were really nervous. We didn't know what we were doing. No brainer in it, guys, really. So do that. Um, I use a thing called canned answers. Just excuse me one second. It's nice. So you probably answered the same questions on email a thousand times. How long can you stay for? Can I get the photos as a high res? Can I buy the prints? Blah, 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 blah. Um, um, and it's really, it's really interesting um, the amount of like traffic, high, tra high volume traffic you get through your email that's just the same shit really. So spend half a day writing canned answers, drafts. I use Microsoft Outlook, other services are available. Um, and um, literally I have, to give you an, an idea of my volume, I have 58 drafts. And these are simple things like the day before a shoot, go into drafts, get the draft uh, shoot confirmation, copy and paste, bang it onto there, send to the client. Um, the address for where the shoot, the pre-shoot is, again, different email, um, just confirming Skype conversations. Send it, if someone sends me emails about food, people always want me to know about what do I want to eat. So instead of answering those individually, I spent half an hour writing everything about my dietary requirements, when I want to eat, how I want to eat, if it's going to cost them a ton of money, I don't want to eat, I'll bring my own food. And again, you, when you get in the morning and you're answering your emails, you just want to literally be cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, literally off your fuck, off your fuck, off your fuck. Get those boring emails out of the way and get onto the really serious nitty gritty stuff. Um, yeah, canned answers or drafts is really good. And it also gives you a consistency of delivery for your business. Oh my God, I'm so behind schedule. Shit. I'm talking really fast as well. Um, collaborate with other vendors during this period as well. Uh, florists, hairdressers, makeup artists, venues, dressmakers, shoemakers, shoemakers. Get in touch with these people, like create relationships with these people. Um, at the minute, obviously, I can't do a lot, but you can. Do it for me. Do it for me, squad. Go out and do a, pre do it, do a style shoot. Um, do it, add it to your portfolio. Give yourself new Instagram content, new Facebook content, but also create relationships with these vendors. And it's also cool to be creative. Like, just be creative. You're not going to lose anything. Obviously, then, when you blog them and you tag them on social media, and hopefully they'll do it back to you, it will. Um, your target audiences are probably going to be the same. So a hairdresser and a florist may have clients that love your work, but they've just never seen it for whatever reason. And as soon as they see the hairdresser that they follow on Instagram, share your work, you've got a booking, boom time. Um, also, the other thing is if you shoot at the same venue a lot, um, venues, we know what they're like. In the UK, they're pre-mercenary. They always want pictures. They always want pictures from you. Um, just reach out and be like, I love shooting at your venue. Here's a ton of pictures. Use it on your blog. Please credit me. Please get me a backlink from your website. And hey, you know what? Let's try and be a preferred supplier, which is a question someone asked. So yeah, if you can be a preferred supplier to a venue, the way to do that is basically just, I hate to do it because it goes against every fiber of my being, but you've got to kiss their ass a little bit. You've got to give them stuff, but then you'll get stuff back. So yeah, that's what you're going to have to do, I'm afraid. Um, yes, yeah, so that's really good. Um, so another thing would be, um, a lot of printers out there. Um, I like to say I use GF Smith, but there's oh, there's loads. There's like Loxley's, there's Graphy, there's Sim 2000. Maybe look at these new printers that you don't use and get a sample album from them. Okay, sample albums are generally free or super cheap. 
It doesn't mean you want to use the printer, it just means you want a cheap sample album, get it made of this wedding venue that you like, you design it uh, using that program we just spoke about, Pixaloop, all the programs are available, um, and then you just send it over to the wedding venue. I mean, really, they are pretty lazy, they will definitely use it, but make sure that your details are on there, make sure your website information is on there, they contact me, and also, if the website, if the if the venue then do make you a recommended supplier, get a backlink back to your website from their website. Like get those links in. We'll go into backlinks in a little bit more. Um, right, um, right. Uh, Google. We're going to talk about Google for a little bit now. Um, so write reviews for vendors and write reviews for venues. Uh, they will firstly they'll like the fact that you've done that. But then also they might write you one and then you're going to have more information of getting back in with them and it'd be really good for seo you create relationships with them and it just really works okay now this is really interesting a uh, big fan of this chap mark bakura and his company wooden banana um think about how you deliver the products um do you just deliver them digitally or do you do albums i only do albums but if you only do them digitally you should definitely think about delivering them as packaging like Mark, everyone knows Mark, he's a super talented guy, he's such a sweetheart, um, he's super good fun. Um, don't just allow your photos to sit on someone's hard drive or sit in someone's desk. Like, you know, get in touch with Wooden Banana, speak about with them about bespoke, clever ways that you can contact your clients, get stuff out to them. Everybody loves things like this. Um, you know, everybody loves it. And then you might want to, I mean, I don't do it because it's a bit cheesy, it's probably not for me with my brand. But you might want to consider like asking them to film an unboxing process and sending you the video and then you pop it on your YouTube channel. I don't know. It's a bit cheesy, but you might want to consider it. Now, this is really important. Google, set up a Google My Business account if you haven't already um, yet. So this is pretty good. It's really important. Um, they can register an account with Google My Business. I think it's initials is GMB. Um, if you have one, make sure to update and strengthen it. Ask a few Recent clients to leave you reviews, 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 testimonials, um, upload really beautiful images, recent work that you've done. Um, and then your Google My Business listing gives you more chances to get organic traffic to your website. We will touch on this in a minute again in more detail. Um, all of these tips are things to get you work. We want to start working on getting new bookings now. Um, so you want to basically get Google My Business, check out what your listing is like, how healthy you are in Google. If you're popping up on page six of Google, nah, that's, 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 that'll kill you. So your website, we want a blog. If you haven't wrote a wedding blog in the last two weeks, then shame on you. Because really, we need to be blogging. Blogging is a really good way to tell Google, I'm alive, and you're killing it. Um, you want to blog like a like an absolute baller. Um, there's two ways you can bring clients to your website. The first is SEO, uh, search engine optimization. Keywords, stats, it's all boring shit and it ain't me. I'm having to learn about it. And literally, I'd rather shoot myself in the, in the head. Um, but I'm having to learn about it because I want to get my business as healthy as possible. Um, and with, when your SEO and your keywords are right, um, you rank high for relevant keywords. However, the competition is mental crazy. There are there are absolute killers out there that are probably doing it a thousand times better than me. And I'm trying my best to muddle through like a drunken toddler. Um, I'm trying my best with it. But so you can do SEO, get involved, find out about it, do your best. But the second method, which is much, much, much easier, invest some time in writing really useful blogs um, for your future clients. Um, basically, wow them with the photography and then write them with in terms of the keywords. What's the point of your blog? Like, is it a venue? Is it a destination wedding? Is it a style shoot? Is it wedding advice? And then blog regularly. So you're telling Google I'm alive and you can fill these blogs with like loads and loads and loads of keywords. Now, keywords, are, essentially, it's just SEO again, but it's much easier than trying to rewrite chunks of code and chunks of copy on your website to chase it. You can just keep updating new content onto your website. Um, and it can be things like, um, again, if you want to get a bit more specific, like my top five wedding venues, there's a blog post. The next week you do checklists for couples on their wedding day. There's another one. Um, ten, uh, five reasons why you should have a destination wedding rather than a, that rather than a normal wedding. There's another one. And you can link these things. So for that one, you would have all your keywords and your SEO 
for about the destination stuff and then you would link it back to the landing page you've already built on your website which is what we spoke about 20 minutes ago oh now you're getting balling so that's where we're at with that um use tools like buzz sumo to identify content that couples like i really like uh, google analytics i don't like it boring but it's actually pretty will help you um i also use a, pro uh, a program called keywords everywhere um keywords everywhere is really interesting because you you install it on chrome or firefox i use pc so it's chrome and then basically you type in keywords it'll give you other keywords that people search for so you're not using the same keywords over and over and over again because that's just boring um yeah so seo you're probably doing basic seo for your website you're probably choosing keywords more accurately for various sections on certain things but the thing you have to remember about seo it's a long-term process it's a long-term process. It's not, you just don't do it once and then you like do it next year. You have to be doing it every every day. So one thing I've, because I've, I've ignored it for so long, but I've been teaching, like I said, I've been doing this course about it and I'm learning about it. It's boring, but you have to do it. Um, so SEO is a long-term thing. Um, you have to get onto it. It will increase your chances of being found by your clients on Google and other search engines. Um, so Google algorithms, things like that. I use keywords, keywords everywhere. There's a website called Yoast, which is really good, and that will tell you how healthy your website is according to Google. It will tell you like things you need to fix to rank higher. So always be checking your Yoast. You want to be working hard to make sure your website is as optimized as possible. Imagine you are Rocky training, 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 because you've got to fight. You're going to have to fight because it's a very cluttered environment out there. Um, the other thing you want to do, obviously, is make sure that your website has a secure SSL certificate. Um, this is just a, a certificate that you get. It's a really important to ranking factors. It's good for clients' experiences. It just says that you're a trusted website, that um, nothing malicious is going to happen so if it clicks on it. This should be fairly obvious. Make sure your site looks good. Make sure it looks well on all devices. I use Flow Themes. Other platforms are available because it's dead easy to use. I think it looks amazing. Um, and it just looks good over all platforms. Most people look at them on these things, mobiles. Um, yeah, so make sure it looks good across all devices. Make sure your website speed is pretty good. Um, it's essential that your um, your website's loading quickly, particularly on mobile phones. If it's if your pictures are too big, if you're bogging it down with loads of YouTube or Vimo videos, just take them out. You will need video, will need photos on your website, but just resize them and make sure that they're optimized, that when people are looking at it on these devices, that they can get to it. Um, you know, take care of your SEO page, structure your page as well. Make sure you've just got relevant textual content and information, headers, internal links are really important. That's where you actually link to other parts of your website. So you may be, I, you know, I might be talking on my packages price um, page about how much things cost. And, and I'll include something like, oh, if you want to put this package, contact me here, which internally links to the contact me page. I might be talking about on a blog post about a destination wedding that I've done, and I'll go, more destination stuff can be found here, which will be an internal link to my actual destination and elopement page that we spoke about earlier. So internal links, again, Google loves that shit. External links, Google loves that shit. Like external links is linked to things you like, you know, like the external link that Way Up North gave me very kindly. Thank you, Carl Roberts. Um, yeah, email marketing. I use MailChimp. Other systems are available. Um, this is dead easy. You just set up your account and you can just like target clumps of clients dead easy you can track the data you can analyze it very good for promotions very good for portraits very good for christmas sales and things like that um, and the main thing is i'd say as well is have a really good about me page like that's really important and have a really nice portrait on there um yeah just try your best i know it doesn't come easy um, but try your best to write a really interesting story about like who you are and and you know and yet we know we know that you like coffee and we know that you like the Walking Dead and we know that you breathe oxygen and you eat three meals a day. We get that, but try and say why it's relevant, why it's interesting, and why you love the photography and why you love shooting weddings and what's your funniest moment. Like put a bit of yourself in there because couples are getting really savvy. Okay. Um, yeah, killer about me page, blah, 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 blah. And if you can, do a short video. Do a short video about, like, introduce yourself. You know, people like to see who they're booking. People buy people. Um, this is the way I get most of my work. Um, I think most of my clients think I'm a lunatic, and they think, yeah, it's perfect for the job. 
works for me. So the other things you can be doing for businesses, we've touched on it. Um, oh, Jonas, killing it. <laughs> Thank you, man. Um, so um, submit work to blogs. That should be a no-brainer. Uh, get your work out to blogs. The big thing I found in industry is there's no secret wall. There's no glass ceiling. And you've just got to ask. I know it seems crazy. Just ask people, can I do this? And most of the time they'll go, yeah. Or, well, not right now, but maybe next month. Just submit works to blogs, um, but be clever with it. You know, like a couple of weeks ago, it's Father's Day in the UK where we celebrate the dads. So, you know, we got a bunch of photos off to a blog and we got it on board Panda and that had loads of traffic. And then we saw a big bump into the website from it. So be strategic, be clever. You know, you don't want to be sending like, you know, summer photos at Christmas time. Um, enter competitions. Yes, competitions are really, really important because who doesn't like winning? But the other thing is, of course, it will just ask you to collate your work, um, organize your work, and just entering and just seeing who wins is always a buzz. There is some really talented motherfuckers out there at the minute, and you're probably one of them. Um, throw your work out there and just see what's buzzing, see what people are buying, see what people like. Just do competitions. Like I try and answer as many as possible. They are fantastic things. I'm really lucky that I've won a bunch, including this one just here. I was the uh, recipient of the Handsome Devils Club which was an award that I gave myself. Um, okay, so pricing, going back to pricing really super quickly, make sure that you've nailed down the break even for everything that you're offering as a photographer. That's really, really, really important. Um, another quick thing you can sort out, uh, which is something that I actually did with uh, a student that I mentor, uh, and she will know exactly what I'm speaking about because she's actually watching right now, is unclog your hard drive on your laptop. Um, do a spring clean of your office, clean your camera equipment, format your memory cards, go through your hard drives, get rid of shit you just do not need. Um, do I have one second, right, I will come back. I will come back to that question, one second. That's really important, yeah, yeah hang on. Right, okay, so I will answer questions at the end. I will literally wrap this up in 10 minutes and then I'll, I'll get through the questions super quick with people. Um, so, I've only got 15 minutes left, 13 minutes left, so I better wrap this up, really. Um, so we were trying to edit one day. We were trying to do some mentoring with my student, and literally she just couldn't process anything on her laptop, and we spent literally 25 minutes of the lesson just going through a hard drive being, oh, my God, you've got 10 gig of RAM on your, on your hard drive. That's why your computer is blowing steam out of its sockets. So... For PC, I use a pro program called TreeSize. All the programs are available. There will be an equivalent for Mac if you just Google TreeSize for Mac. And basically, just go through your hard drive and just scrap shit. If you don't need it on the hard drive, get it onto external storage. Get it off. Her computer literally sped up. Almost said it, it turned from a, from a dying nag into a stallion, thoroughbred. Um, so do it. it, it, it you, won't, you won't regret it. Um, um, the other thing that you really want to be doing in terms of uh, another quick thing you can do, uh, Lightroom presets. Uh, everyone uses Lightroom or use Capture One. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I got bored of bringing in photos and always doing the same adjustments because I was looking for more consistency of my work. So design your own preset. Spend two hours doing your own preset, moving the sliders to how you like them, and then save it as a preset and save it. Lightroom's clever. When you import photos now, you can import, imply your own preset. Saves you doing the work, doesn't it? And it also means that you're paying attention to the consistency in the way that you deliver the work. That's equally really, really important. Okay, ask for reviews. Reviews on Google and reviews on Facebook. Really important. People love social media. Um, people love Google. People trust them. I mean, you're not going to – I mean, I bombard my clients for it, and generally eh, probably about a third will actually make the time to do it. I mean, as it stands, I've got nearly, I think I've got like over 185 five-star reviews on Facebook, which is pretty good. And obviously that then migrates to, to Google in some way, shape. I think it locates to like other directories. But it's really work cool because when I'm chatting to, bro, uh, to couples and I'm like, hey, well, you know, here's some transparency. Check me out on this, um, on this platform. And they go, holy shit, he's had like over 185 star reviews. He must be like, he's mental, but he must be good. So that's good. Yeah, get that done. Okay, I'm going to quickly, quickly, quickly touch on um, social media really quickly, and then I'm going to ask a, answer a few quick questions. Um, okay, social media, really use this time now to be rethinking 
your social media presence. Um, try and try this thing called top of mind awareness. If you've never heard the term, it basically is a form of brand awareness that involves putting your consistent brand identity out to the audience. Basically, be ruthless with it. I had to do this myself last year. For those that don't know, I actually changed my, my business name last year, which was a really ballsy move after nearly 22 years. But my old brand wasn't working. It wasn't what I wanted to do. We were getting bogged down with the past far too much. Um, and I had to look at my social media and be like, well, the stuff from a year to two years ago um, is it's just not relevant. It's just not working. So I actually was like, fuck it. I'm going to burn it all down. I'm going to be like Bane. Oh, no, the Joker. Yeah, I'm more like the Joker than Bane. I'm not as hench as Bane. Um, and start again. So don't be scared to do that. But top of the brand awareness was like, what's important to me? So when you are pushing work onto Instagram, make sure it's a consistency of delivery, like all the colors are cool, black and whites are consistent, the crops, the expressions. Think about what your brand is. Know your brand. And the other thing you might want to, the, the, the things you really want to be thinking about is, right, what makes your company special? Well, you are special. You're creative. But even within our um our industry, there's like little niches and little subsections. So what makes you special? That's really, really important. Spend the time sitting. What is my brand? What am I, am I living my brand? My brand is we're quite rock and roll. We're energetic. We're mischievous. We are, we are people, people focused service provider that provides kick-ass photos and a great experience. We love what we do. Um, and our clients love it even more. We're very conscious to express that in a lot of the copy on, on our website and social media. Um, be proactive. You know, I, I post every day on Instagram. Um, I use a program called Tailwind. Other programs are available. You can also use Later, which is really good. Um, and you can just schedule your posts. And I do it every Monday morning. It takes about 30 minutes. I schedule the posts. I can see what I'm posting. I use the pro version because it's cheaper. It's not cheaper. It's more expensive, obviously. Um, but I use the pro version because you can just like schedule everything. You can put really nice words and captions in it and everything like that. And it's done. And I know every single night it's posting and it's, it's posting with the message I want. Um, use constant, consistent branding. Like that's really, really important. I was a, such a victim of this myself. Honestly, if you just looked at my work like um, in April last year, it was all over the place. It was a mess. I was really coming to the end of my tether with where my business was going because we were just getting dragged back by all this old shit. And so we just had to burn it down. And it was the most refreshing thing I've ever done. Um, use multiple sources and multiple channels. So I use Instagram, Facebook, and Instagram stories. I don't use Instagram stories that much because uh, I, I just, I, you know, my personal life's quite personal. I, I don't really like to share too much of my day-to-day -day stuff. I don't really, I'll only share if I've got something interesting to say and it's business related. A lot of people don't. A lot of people post all kinds of stuff and that's cool, but it's just not me. I don't like sharing my life that way. Um, but when I do Instagram stories, I use, um, I use an app called Unfold. Other programs are available, full disclosure. Um, Unfold is really cool. Uh, again, it will give you that consistency of Instagram stories because all your fonts will be the same. The layouts will be the same. It will just look professional. Um, and be useful as a photographer. Like you, That's the best way in social media to get work, I think, is just be useful. Like It's the Apple thing, isn't it? Create a problem, solve a problem. You know, it's, not, it's not rocket science. So Instagram, you should be using location tags, tagging collaborators, doing stories. This is prime real estate. You should, we should all be doing this. It's not rocket science. It's dead easy. Um, and if you have different businesses, like you have maybe elopement or you have portraits and weddings, just set up separate brands. What you don't want to be doing on your wedding account is having loads of baby photos. I personally feel you don't want to have a load of baby photos and then a load of product photos and then a load of school photos. Oh, and then there's actually some wedding photos as well. Um, so I would definitely be doing that. Facebook, dead easy, create a page and then connect with other Facebook groups. It's not rocket science. I only really post my Facebook page maybe once or twice, maybe three times maximum a week, generally with information about where I'm at, what portfolio signings I'm at, you know, where to meet me and things like that. I don't use Twitter myself um, because it, for me it puts more emphasis on words, but a lot of people have made success with it. Um, so yeah. I use Unfold for Instagram stories. 
Um, and it, it works really well. I use Tailwind and Later for, to program Instagram and things like that. So that's essentially where we're at. So I did have loads more to, to talk about, guys, if I'm, if I'm honest. I had so much more, but I've completely ran out of time. I've got about six minutes left. So I've had a bunch of questions, so I'm going to basically just try and get through the questions. So let's have a little, hang on one second. Okay. Right. Do I have any tricks to seal the deal quick and avoid to coming back to? Ah, is this with new clients, I assume? Um, yeah. Really be yourself. Okay. That's the one thing I can say is be authentic. Be yourself. People smell bullshit a mile away. People are buying you as much as they're buying your work. And that is the that is the absolute truth. Um, if your work is is shitty, um, you're not going to get booked. Um, if your work is amazing, um, but you're shit and you're difficult to deal with and you're moody, you're not going to get booked. Um, be authentic. Be yourself. Work out what your brand is. Know your brand. Um, live it. Um, in terms of dealing with clients, what I do is I essentially, from the point of which they contact me, I go straight to my canned responses or my drafts. I have a really nicely written draft. Grab it, reply to them immediately if I'm free. And I mean immediately. Personalize it. And on that draft, I have questions. What more can you tell me about your wedding? Really excited about it. Here's a little Adobe Spark PDF that I've actually created. Here's a guide for brides. Here's things you haven't already thought of, guys, maybe. So all they've done, the client has pinged you an email. Hey, like your work. Got on the contact section. Here's a quick email. Um, and then within five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, they get a really cool email back from me, enthusiastic. And what I'm trying to do in that first email, as I'm saying, call and free. Here's a guide. Here's some things to think about. Can we set up a telephone or Zoom meeting? Because it's really interesting that we get each other's energy and we understand what if it's right for each other. Um, generally, people quite like proactivity. They've contacted you for a reason. So don't be scared to kind of reach out and, and, and answer those questions because that's really that's what they're there for. Uh, that's what you're there for. Um, so I send them um, information about what can you tell me about the day? Um, can we do a Zoom? Can we do a chat? Um, my, all my prices are on my website. So I'm completely transparent. I know a lot of photographers aren't. A lot of photographers don't enjoy doing it. That's cool, but I don't like that. So one of the things I do is I straight away go, what package are you looking at, guys? What investment are you looking at spending with me? What value of money are you looking at spending with me? Um, straight away, we're engaged in conversations. I've sent them this guide. They're going to read the guide. I get them on the Zoom chat, and we just like chat backwards and forwards. Do you know If you don't know the venue beforehand, try and get some information from the venue, time of year, and when I then talk into them, I have a bullet point list of things I want to talk about. Like, I'm the expert, right? I'm there to dazzle them. So I'm there talking about the quality of light at the time of the year. Oh, yeah, you get married at that venue. Yeah, I've been there. I wasn't there at that time, but I was there like four months earlier. And there was this fantastic spot at the bottom of the garden. But given the fact that you're getting married in September and not May, we're going to have a fantastic sunset. And I know because I've been on the website and I've looked at the venue that I know the sun sets at that spot. And that'd be beautiful for your evening photos. Like, wow them. It's not hard to put a little bit of energy into it, and then all of a sudden, they're going to be like, oh, my God, this guy, yeah, he's just crushing it. He knows what he's talking about. And the other thing I always say to all of my clients is, look, in the wrap-up, and this, this works for me, may not work for you, but the way I always seal the deal is I say, right, guys, so what I do is I offer a pre-shoot on my website for $200. And one thing I say to everybody is I say, look, you've inquired, I offer this to everybody. At the end of this call, if you do choose to book me, which I hope you do because we've had a great energy, blah, 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 I will do the pre-shoot complimentary for you. Generally, people are just looking for initiative. They're looking for an incentive. The pre-shoot is only an hour of your time. It's an hour of my time, of a location of my choosing. It physically isn't costing anything me financially. People like savings, and people like that the fact that you're enthusiastic to work with them. Um, so that's what I tend to do. And I do tend to say to people as well, especially at the wedding shows that I do, because I do a lot of portfolio signings, uh, sessions where I'm there, my portfolio, thousands of clients. And if someone's chatting to me and there's a good energy, I'm like, look guys, this is the deal. Your date's still free, but may not be free in an hour. 
So if you want to work with me, you're going to have to let me know because I get double booked very quickly. I mean, I'm in the nice position with my business that it's quite strong and I do book up um, three or four years in advance. Maybe not three or four, maybe two or three. Again, a bit braggy there. But um, you have got that. And especially if you are, because I'm relatively established in the UK now, so I'm able to sort of use that as a way to say to people, look, if you want it, you're going to have to book it. And that, yeah, that's the thing I tend to say is just don't be scared to be a little bit aggressive. Not like, don't be a dick, but be direct. People like direction. People want to be sold to, in my experience. People are looking like for the expert. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that, that's my advice for that. Um, so there was a question about Pinterest. Um, does anybody recommend it? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, it's something I've recently started exploring as a social media option. Um, it's a social media platform. It's more of a search engine. Um, so you've got to make sure that if you're sharing the content on Pinterest, I would assume that you want to make sure that your content is optimized. Um, but it could be good. It could work. I mean, I've looked at it from a point of view of having venues on it. So I drop my venues and... Um, you know, I tag them in and blah, 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 blah. And then if brides are on Pinterest and they get married at a venue, then they come across my photos. It's something I'm exploring. I don't use it enough, if I'm honest. Um, and yeah, that's it. That, that's, that, that's, that's, that, that's my advice on, on Pinterest. And we've got probably one last point, one last point, then one last question. What am I doing to fill the gaps in lockdown? Oh, well, it's tough. It's tough. So to wrap up, during this time in lockdown, one of the things I've been doing, it's boring, but I've been running. I've been running for like 6K a day. And it's it's boring, but it gets you out. And the medicinal value of running is that it's about 40 minutes, it's exercise, and you're burning nearly 500 calories. Um, and you're doing that five or six times a day, uh, for five or six times a week. Um, get your, if you're going to do it, anybody can run. That's the thing. You don't need anything special to run. Just put your trainers on and go for a run. Do it. Do it early in the morning. Focus your mind, come back, and then start crushing work, absolutely crushing it, um, knowing that you're going to win. And start saying, right, well, I'm going to do an hour on SEO, and I'm going to do an hour on this, and I'm going to do an hour on this, and, and timeline things in. My working hours when I'm working at home, always tends to be realistically um, nine to 12, and then I'll take a 90 minute break and I'll do like 1.30 until five. Um, and that's how I work. They're, that's my working hours and I will literally fill them hours working nonstop. And there's never a point, if you're finding there's nothing I can do, there's always loads of things you can do. There's always things you can do. There's always things you can absolutely do. So just, just go and crush it guys. That's me done. Dinner out. Peace out. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do want to find out anything more about me, don't be strangers. Um, drop me a DM on Instagram. Um, do just follow me there. Drop me a message and I'll happily answer anybody's questions. Reach out to me. I do offer mentoring and support. Do reach out if you've got any questions or if you need any help at all. We're all in this together. Uh, we're all part of this amazing community. So yeah, leave it there, guys. Peace out. Take care.